In this video, we're going to learn how to easily create fog using a translucent or see-through objects in Unreal Engine 5.0. So I'm using the first person project template to demonstrate how this material actually works. So the first thing that we're going to do over here is go to the content browser, right click and select material. I'm going to call this M fog. So open this up and in here click on the main node over here and go to details material and blend mode and choose translucent over here you can see translucent select it and once we are done with that we can right click over here and search for scene depth all right so this gets the depth of the scene and then we're going to drag the scene depth and search for divide and go to details again under constant b give a value of 2000 all right so this is going to divide the scene depth data by 2000 all right so i'll show you what i mean later on when i explain what these nodes actually do but for now just follow along so drag from the divide node and search for power all right and then drag once again from the power node and search for clamp so just drag the main node away and then from the clamp we're going to search for lerp linear interpolate so you can see over here linear interpolate selected and make sure to change the output node of the clamp to the alpha value of lerp all right not on the a pin over here and then we need to add a constant and instead of searching it like this i mean i could add it like this but instead of adding the constant node this way which is a bit slower you can press the one key in your keyboard and then click the left mouse button and there it creates this node so it's much faster to easily just create a bunch of these nodes very quickly all right and this also works for other nodes so if you wanted a constant two vector just press the two key and press the left mouse button and there if you wanted a three vector if you wanted a four vector constant you can do it this way it's much faster than searching the individual constant each and every time you want to add them all right so you can delete this one up and actually search for a three vector three vector constant and add this to the b pin so this is going to be the color of our fog so you can choose any color that you want and then over here right click and search for scene color and connect the output to the a pin and then drag the output of the lerp node to the emissive color and we're done with the material you can see already the results over here and i'm going to now convert this into a parameter so we can manipulate the values in a material instance later on so I'm going to call this fog color and then I'm going to create a constant and convert this to a parameter as well and call this fog distance. Alright, so connect this to the B pin and set the default value of the fog distance over here to 2000. There. And that's it you're done click on apply and save and then i'm going to go over here back to our level and then i'm just going to quickly create a material instance again you can right click and it will create this option over here called create material instance and you can select this to create a material instance of this material over here the mfog 
so I'm just going to leave the name of the material instance as it is so I'm going to click on this button over here navigate to shapes and you have this option called cube so I'm going to select it drag it down closer to the level over here drag it over here and then I'm just going to add the mfog instance the material instance of the mfog to this material and you can already see the material in action right so I'm going to play this and there so this is what I'm talking about it's a translucent material that basically creates fog when you look through it so if I were to move further away you can see that the cube changes in color but objects that are near to it becomes more transparent so this can be kind of useful in certain situations in my case I was using it in a tutorial series in my temple run prototype tutorial series where the depth fade node which is the node that you use to kind of simulate the same thing does not work for some reason so I actually ended up using the scene depth node to actually simulate fog in my game and I just wanted to create a video about this so that others that might also want to create an effect that is similar to this might find this video a bit more useful so to demonstrate some of the things in this material if I were to open the material instance drag this a bit over here and I'm going to scale this cube over here so I'm going to now use the material instance and modify the values to show you how to modify some of the effects in this material so again dragging the material instance over here so that's this material instance over here and then click on the checkbox over here and the first value that we're going to change is the fog distance so if I were to increase the value you can see the fog disappearing all right but if I were to decrease the value then you can see the fog appearing a lot sooner so this can be useful to control how you want your fog to actually look like and then you obviously have the color so I can change the color to anything that I want and obviously this being a parameter means that you can actually modify the values in real time alright so that can be kind of useful for certain games or for certain game mechanics coming back to the material I'm going to quickly explain what all of this does again the scene depth over here basically gets the depth of the scene and you can easily visualize this by going to the level over here under the viewport click on lit and then you have the option called buffer visualization and in here you actually have scene depth all right so click on this and in here you can see the depth information of the level so the further away you are the pixels over here that is the furthest away from you becomes brighter or more white in color all right but if you were to come closer to the object then the color of the pixels become more darker or black and this difference in color is what we are using in the lerp node to control the difference between the scene color and the fog color and i'll kind of explain that in a minute but yeah that's basically how the scene depth actually looks like and then we're dividing it by 2000 so again if i were to directly connect this scene depth to the emissive color it will be really bright so it's going to take some time to prepare the shaders you can see it's way too bright and we don't want that and that is why the scene depth is always divided by a certain value preferably a value in thousands in order to make it more easier for us to see things all right so if i have to add this value over here you can see it becomes more easier to differentiate the object from the background the objects that are further away are now completely white 
whereas objects that are closer to us are more darker. So we can now differentiate the objects. And the power node basically makes the difference between the fog and the object a lot more apparent. So if I were to directly connect the divide node and then connect the lerp node over here, you can see that it is a bit too difficult to see properly. You can't easily differentiate the plane from the actual fog. But if I were to connect the power node, you can see that the difference between the plane and the fog is a lot more clearer. So this makes it a little bit more easier to differentiate the objects in the scene. Alright, but if you don't want that, you can just remove this node over here. With that done, these two nodes over here are quite obvious. The fog color obviously gives color to the fog over here. And the scene color gives the color of the rest of the image. If I were to remove the scene color from the lerp node, you can see that we don't see the color of the plane or the objects anymore. Alright, so that is not going to be very useful for us. Rather, if we were to connect the scene color again, we can see the color and the textures of the objects. And this is very important and useful when we are creating a transparent or a see-through object like this material over here. And that's how this material actually works. So hopefully you found this video useful. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.